Hey everybody, this is Professor Pega Metalev, and I wanted to make a quick video on the topic of credible sources because I know that you'll be doing some research to find sources for your essay number one and two, and I wanted you to just kind of have a little bit of background on what I mean when I say use credible sources. And not just me, but your other teachers too. In your future classes, when you will do, you know, writing assignments, they're going to want you to use the best sources um, to learn about whatever topic you're writing about um, and to have that reflected in your papers. So this PowerPoint that I'm going over will also be posted um, for you in the classroom as well. Um, so some general and basic qualities that you want to look for when you're selecting your sources to reference and bring in content into your paper is that you want to look for sources that are written by authors and organizations whom you can look up. So if it's written by somebody by the name of, you know, David Smith, I should be able to look him up, see what organization he's from, what are his experiences and background, what his expertise are. And if there's no author, but there's only a name of an organization, I should be able to see if this organization is legitimate, if it's a nonprofit, if it's supported by the government, if it's supported by a group of grassroots people. All of the information should be transparent. The source should be published by a credible entity that is not biased. So if you go to many of the um, resources on the databases in the library, as I've shown in the previous videos, um, all of those articles have been published in journals that are now in databases that we're looking up. And these journals have multiple editors who fact check there are groups of experts in the field of whatever your topic is about, and they actually verify that the information and the content being written by the author is true and not just made up by this individual. And that's what makes the articles in the databases credible. And um, the risk of them being non-credible is very low. Um, the content of the source, yeah, so um, while we can't avoid 100% personal opinions and personal feelings, after all, we're all human beings, so what we write does reflect what we feel in our heart and our values and morals, a great majority of the content of the source should be based on research and facts, meaning studies, and so the article should constantly be referencing this study, this source, and this time period, and this historical event. And when you're reading your source and it has all of those qualities, then you are looking at a well-written source, a credible source. But if it's just based on a person's personal experience and perspective and all their writing is about is information that reflects their lens and how they're viewing the world through their own lens, then you're not looking at the best um, credible source. Um, most credible sources give you historical context about the topic. Um, and also the authors of credible sources provide to you their email addresses and you can email them. They're very transparent. And whenever they show their email address or their address, it shows that they want their readers to reply to them and engage in conversations with them. Those authors tend to be more credible than the ones who are kind of like trolls behind social media, writing negative comments. Those, those you know, are, are trolls. And you want to stay away from authors who are not authentic and willing to further the conversation beyond what they have published in their paper. You want to look to see if the writing style is academic, intellectual, professional, and appropriate. If there's a tons of grammar and punctuation errors, if they're writing in a silly or, you know, inappropriate tone about a topic that is pretty heavy and dense, um, and they're just making a joke 
um, about it, then it's probably not a good source. It's probably good entertainment. You know, it'll probably give you some laughs, but maybe not the information that you need. And you also want to look for information that is rich in content. You know, if you find a website and there's only like a short paragraph written about your topic, that's going to be a different learning experience if you find a journal article that's like four or five pages long where the author has delved deeper into the topic. So the, the quality and the quantity of content is also something you can judge um, when you are choosing your sources. So let me show you guys an example. If you guys go to Google, this morning I went to Google and I just typed in, in Google, you know, what is happiness? Because I wanted to write a research paper about the topic of happiness. And I, you know, this website came up, uh, internet, happinessinternational.org. And it has great pictures. Um, the website seems to be organized really nicely. In the margins, there's links to more articles that I can read. But as I was reading this website, even though the information sounded, you know, pretty clear to me, there wasn't a whole lot of references to um, experts in the field and their knowledge and their perspectives. Um, here in this paragraph, um, you know, it talked about how pleasure is fleeting and must be if it is to continue to please us because if we have these joyful experiences all the time, our brains adapt and train and turn pleasure into routine. So I was like, oh, there's some scientific information there. Yay, great. But then I clicked on this link over here and unfortunately it wasn't scientific information about happiness. It was a company where they were just trying to sell me something. You know, um, there was this woman and her picture and her contact information, um, and it took me to a website called DomainMarket.com, which has nothing to do about the topic of happiness. So sometimes these websites may seem really good on the surface, but where they get the information from and who has written this article is just a little bit vague. So this is the kind of source that I would not want to use. Um, however, on the opposite end of that, I found this great article called In Pursuit of Happiness by Olivia Milan and Sherry Christine from the library databases. And in this, in this article, you know, they have cited World Happiness Report. They have cited professors of psychology from Cornell University who are constantly doing research and publishing and getting their work verified. Um, I know the date of the publication. They have brought in some historical context about the topic of happiness. You know, this is the context for the Declaration of Independence Pursuit of Happiness language according to political and social commentator Carol Hamilton. Uh, when John Locke, Samuel Johnson, and Thomas Jefferson wrote of the pursuit of happiness, they were invoking the Greek and Roman philosophical tradition in which happiness is bound up with the civic, with the civic virtue of courage, moderation, and justice. Um, she wrote in an article on History News Network. Um, there are, um, you know, people whose perspectives are backed up by their expertise in this article. U.S. ranking was distrusted according to Jeffrey Sachs, another editor of the World Happiness Report, who is professor of sustainable development and director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University. Um, as I'm reading this source, I see people from University of British Columbia economics professor John Hallowell, right? Um, I see that Canadian Institute of Advanced Research is referenced in this article about happiness. Um, you know, as I'm reading this article, I see, you know, people who are authors about happiness, um, professors of psychology at the University of British Columbia. And towards the end of the article, I see Olivia Milan and Sherry Christie's websites and their email addresses. So if I want to email them and continue this conversation, I can. So this would be considered a credible source, the kind of source that you in English 101 level want to use for your research papers. 
Um, so when in doubt, ask your peers. If you come across a source and it sounds good and you want to use it um, and you just don't know if it's credible or not, ask your peers in the class what they think. Ask your professor. Ask our graduate tutor. Ask tutors at the writing center. Um, and, and see if, you know, you can get multiple perspectives to um, give you that green check. Um, and you want to use a variety of different sources that have a variety of different perspectives about your topic, different opinions, different date times. You know, like it, reading an article about the topic of happiness published in 2001 is going to be different from reading an article about the topic of happiness published in 2019. So really definitely look at a wide range of perspectives and bring those perspectives into your paper. And then tell me, as a result of looking at multiple perspectives about your topic, what conclusion have you reached? And that's your big thesis statement. You can find credible sources pretty much everywhere, but the places that I always refer students to is library. Um, anything from the library is most likely credible, but again, it's not 100%. So do use your best judgment. Um, Google Scholar has academic material. Um, I find some great videos on YouTube, but as you're watching the YouTube video, listen and hear if studies and research and science and expert opinions have been referenced, not just like a YouTube influencer talking about their personal experience in reaching happiness. Netflix has great documentaries and series. Um, you know, nowadays it's pretty hard to get on Netflix. The producers have to go through multiple editors and steps to get onto that venue. Um, Wikipedia is not bad. You don't want to reference Wikipedia, but if you scroll down to the very, very bottom section of it, Wikipedia, there's a list of references that you can click into and that you can find a lot of good material. So if you go here to Google and let's just say, I'm going to type in happiness, Wikipedia, right? What I don't want to cite is, I, in my paper, I don't want to cite information that I get up here because anybody can go and create a Wikipedia account and add to this content. I don't want to cite any of, any of this. I can read it to kind of get started on my paper, like overcome writer's block, um, but if you scroll all the way to the very, very bottom, you have these references and you can actually click into these references and access these sources. And when you do that, um, again, judge to see if the source is credible, written by legit authors, and then you can reference these sources. Um, some other things that you want to ask yourself is, um, you know, is this article that I'm reading and wanting to reference in my paper a productive learning opportunity? Is the content of the source damaging and hurtful to an individual or group of individuals? And if it is, don't use it. It's more, most likely, personal opinion, personal bias. It's not really, it's good for entertainment and like maybe dinner table talk conversations with your family, but not a college academic paper. We have to have sources that reflect civil discourse about these topics and that, that are not hostile or violent in content and images. Those sources are good to go. Okay, so I think I've clear, uh, spelled out what the expectations for sources are. I'm going to end this video, and if you have any questions or comments, just feel free to reach out to me. And uh, I look forward to reading your research papers. Okay, thank you.